Greenstead Church spans the history of Christianity as well as the ages of England for people have worshipped here continuously for 1,300 years. This is the oldest wooden church in the world and the oldest wooden building standing in Europe. Hello again everyone, this is going to be a quick little video. Now of course if you're a regular like a subscriber and you regularly watch my videos on the channel you'll know that I don't mind the odd church or two and visiting them on day walks and stuff. So this is something a little bit different, it's a video just about a church, one church in particular. This one's of particular importance, basically we're in Greenstead which is near Ongar in Essex, so it's not far from, from me. I've been here loads of times in my life, and I thought, you know what, I want to do a, a video about Greenstead Church. Reason being, it's the oldest wooden church in the world. That's pretty cool. It's got quite a few records that it holds <clears throat> in terms of how old it is and stuff. Um, I should also introduce Candice is with us as well. So she really wants to have a look at this church, so... Yeah, let's go and have a little butchers at it. Greenstead Church is the only wooden church to have survived from Saxon times. Even here, only the nave walls are Saxon. They were probably erected in about 1060 AD. The name Greenstead suggests that the Saxons who first settled here found a clearing or place, stead, in the vast forest of which Epping and Hainault forests are only remnants. The Saxon settlers worshipped their pagan gods in groves in the forest, and at the first, the East Saxons resisted attempts to convert them to Christianity by Augustine and Melitus from Rome. Finally, St. Said, a Saxon trained at the Celtic monastery at Lindy's farm, was successful. His base was a deserted Roman fort near Bradwell, and his cathedral, now called St Peter's on the Wall, can still be seen there. This wooden cross marks the grave of Edward Edwards, the owner of a local inn who died in 1842 whilst using a scythe in a nearby field as part of a bet taken during a bout of heavy drinking. The oldest grave is the shield-shaped one on the south side of the church, believed to be the final resting place of a bowman who had been on one of the 12th century crusades. The fact that it was made of stone, not a local material, and was placed against the south wall suggests that he was seen as a local hero. Other interesting graves are those of Reverend Philip Ray, surrounded by railings, the Ald and Budworth families of Greenstead Hall. A survey in the graveyard in 1981-82 revealed a total of 52 memorials, although the many mounds suggest that at one time this figure was greatly exceeded. So this is another grave of particular interest. So this one was a crusader's grave from the 12th century. So Knight of the Crusades went off to fight overseas and yeah, this is where he's buried. So that's another really, really old grave there. So 12th century, we're looking at what, 1100s? So sort of the latter part of the Norman era. So uh, yeah, what I'll do is I'll give you a little tour around the outside the church first before before we head in. I know you're, you're dying to go in. So yeah, this is definitely one of my favorite churches. It's unbelievable. Probably is my favorite church actually. <laughs> In the 9th century, Danish invasions became a serious threat. The raids produced a host of Saxon martyrs, of whom King Edmund of East Anglia is especially remembered here. St Edmund was crowned King of East Anglia, aged 15, at Burrs, Suffolk on Christmas Day, 855 AD, and was martyred by the Danes on November 20th, 1869 AD. He became the first patron saint of England, but later the Normans replaced him with St George. At his martyrdom he refused to give up his Christian beliefs, so he was scourged, chained to a tree, 
shot with arrows and finally beheaded. His body was enshrined at Bury St Edmunds where it attracted many pilgrims. Later it was removed to London for safekeeping but returned to Bury in 1013. On its way it was rested here at St Andrew's Church. An attractive legend depicted on the beam relates to St Edmund's martyrdom. His head was thrown into a thicket in the forest some distance from the body. When his followers found his head it was guarded by a wolfhound who would not leave it until it was placed with the body. William the Conqueror and his forces, having conquered the Saxons in 1066 AD, set about imprinting their image on the land in a building program which included the rebuilding of older churches. The flint footings of the chancel wall and the pillar piscina inside the sanctuary, which is a basin for washing communion vessels, are all that remain of Norman work here at the church. In 1995, the church was examined dendrochronologically. That is to say, the annual growth rings of a timber form a unique pattern which can be measured, plotted and related to a master sequence or curve of tree rings which has been constructed for a long time span. Although the result of the dendrochronological analysis of the timber walls indicates that the church was constructed around 1060 to 1063 AD rather than the earlier date of 845 AD it still remains the oldest wooden church in the world and the oldest wooden building standing in Europe. It is attracting even more attention from scholars than previously and is likely to be the subject of a thorough architectural examination shortly funded by English heritage. Feelings ran high about religion in the 17th century and church attendance was compulsory. The tower may have been built at this time to house the bells, one of which is inscribed William Land Made Me 1618. Some consider the tower to be earlier as there are a number of medieval wooden towers and belfries in the district. Right, let's just have a look inside. You know the score. Let's go through that door. Okay, so this is the interior. So they get people from all over the world coming here. They do have CCTV as well because because they have a lot of people coming in, they know that they also, unfortunately, bring trouble as well. So I'll just sort of show you round. As I say, it's a very, very small church. Now, there we go, you see that over there? That is the leper's squint from outside that we showed you a minute ago. St. Said began his work in about 654 AD, and probably the first church at Greenstead was built soon after. An archaeological dig in 1960 revealed the impression of two simple wooden buildings under the present chancel floor, which were thought to have been built in the late 6th or early 7th century. The logs had been held upright by simply dropping them into a trench. If the dating is correct, it was probably one of many sanctuaries used by missionaries and priests people would have gathered outside to listen to them. The dedication of the church to St Andrew also suggests a Celtic foundation. The nave was added in about 1060 AD according to the dendrochronological method of dating timber. The technique of construction was more advanced than that of the sanctuary and was no doubt a welcome shelter for the worshippers. The Saxon nave was windowless save for a few eye holes known as Eeg Thyril, but the darkness would have been relieved by the glow of lamps round the altar and perhaps in the nave. Dark patches on some wall timbers may be scorch marks from the lamps. 
the flat inner sides of the logs were smoothed with adzes and tie beams probably crossed the building at the height of the eaves. The opening from sanctuary to nave was probably small and surmounted by a crucifix. Henry VII's reign saw the beginning of great changes in thought and techniques which are reflected in the extensive alterations made to the church at this time. The chancel was rebuilt in brick and the thatch was replaced by tiles on both nave and chancel roofs. Three dormer windows gave daylight to the nave for the first time and the south porch was added. Probably the chancel arch was widened to its present dimensions at this time thus lessening the separation of the priest from his people. A fragment of 15th century glass can be seen in the centre of the quatrefoil window at the west end, but it was set there during the Victorian Restoration. This stained glass window depicts St Andrew, which Greenstead Church is dedicated to. Very little is known about the life of St Andrew, although he was the brother of St Peter. He was a fisherman on the Sea of Galilee and became a follower of John the Baptist before he was called by Christ to be one of the twelve disciples. St Andrew is believed to have preached in several parts of Asia Minor and finally was crucified on an X-shaped cross at his own request because he felt unworthy of dying on a cross like his saviours. The diagonal form which is now called the St Andrew cross is seen in the south facing chancel window. He was adopted as patron saint of Scotland around 750 AD. His festival is kept on November the 30th when Christians pray for missionary work throughout the world as St Andrew is considered the first of all Christian missionaries. Many people know this hole as a leper squint but archaeologists doubt this. It is more likely given the fact that it is adjacent to the original doorway to have been a small window or that the ledge held a holy water stoop in the Middle Ages. So yeah, anyway, that's um, that's the end of the video. We're just leaving the church now. I've got to drop Candice off back at hers and I'm off to work. But yeah, it's a lovely, lovely little church. Hope you enjoyed watching that video. Um, I probably won't make too many videos just about churches, okay? So don't worry. Um, it's just if it's of historical significance and that one certainly is i mean oldest wooden church in the world that's unbelievable you look through like the visitors book and there's people from all over the world that come there so it must be pretty special and the fact that it's on my doorstep is amazing anyways yeah thank you for watching get in the comments let us know what you think you'll see us again soon cheers bye the construction is still something of a mystery and is making experts ask all sorts of questions. I cannot tell you anything about the buildings which stood here before this one. There have been some interesting Roman finds in the area but only enough to make us realise that we know next to nothing. Nobody, it seems, can plumb the depths of Greenstead.